morning all. Now today I'm going to start a brand new project and this is an Arduino based solar charge controller using pulse width modulation, a PWM solar charge controller. Now a while back I made the rather bold claim that I was going to do this using just an Arduino Pro Mini and a MOSFET and two resistors but actually that's not going to work and I'll show you why. So here's a nice simple circuit with a 12 volt battery and a light bulb which is up here and an N-channel MOSFET connecting them together. Now I've drawn them as common positive so the battery and the light bulb are common together on the positive line. This point then is minus 12 volts and with the source of the N-channel MOSFET connected to the negative of the battery and the gate connected to the positive of the battery, the MOSFET turns on which pulls drain down to source, which pulls the light bulb right across the full potential of the battery and the light bulb lights up. So yes, I could use these two components to switch on a battery and a light bulb, but the situation with a solar panel is slightly different. So let's remove the MOSFET and connect it now like this. So I've turned it around. Um, You've got source, again, connected to the negative of the battery. That's necessary in order that we can connect the gate to the positive to turn this on. But before I turn this MOSFET on, look at what this circuit's doing. We've got the solar panel here. Current is flowing round the circuit through the battery, so it's charging the battery, and through the body diode and back to the solar panel. So this doesn't work because that body diode is conducting all the time because the solar panel is at a more negative potential down here than the battery. So we have a continuously on circuit through the body diode even without switching the MOSFET on. It's a configuration that for a charge controller doesn't work. So then I thought well what about a P-channel MOSFET in the high side of the circuit? Here I've got a common zero volts on the negative side of both the solar panel and the battery. But the situation is exactly the same with a P-channel on the high side. This high potential here, plus 20 volts on the solar panel, simply flows through the P-channel body diode and into the battery. So we can't put a P-channel on the high side of the circuit for a solar charge controller. So how do you actually do this? Well, here's a cheap solar charge controller. It's um, about six pounds on eBay. It's not pulse width modulation, it's just a simple on off uh, switching charge controller but I wanted to look at the circuitry and how it works so let's take the lid off and take a look inside so if I flip this board over like that and tuck it inside there we can have a look at how this is wired up by looking at the tracks at the bottom of the board now the first thing that you notice is that this is a common positive controller so we've got positive of the solar panel here, which is at that point. Positive of the battery is this connection. Positive of the load is this connection. They're all common together. It's common positive. And that's the same as my circuit here, where I've got the positive of the battery, positive of the solar panel here, and the positive of the lamp, uh, the load, if indeed you have a load in your charge controller, all on this zero volt line, but it's the, all the positives are connected together. So the switching is done on the negative side of the solar panel to the negative side of the battery. And that's down here. There's the negative side of the solar panel. There's the negative side of the battery. And I'll show you what that connects to in the circuit. It connects to the source pin of these two MOSFETs here. So source is this pin here. And the other source is this pin here. Now the drains are the tabs and you can see that these two MOSFETs are screwed down to this metal heatsink with no insulating washer. There's an insulating washer here on the load switching MOSFET but not these two. So these are connected drain to drain. So this is actually the circuit here. We've got the battery here and the solar panel over on the right hand side. The two MOSFETs connecting the negative of the battery to one source and the negative of the solar panel to the other source and the two drains are simply connected together and they don't go anywhere else they just connect to each other now you can see that the two body diodes are pointing at each other so effectively there's no body diode path for current to flow 
So if we turn those two MOSFETs on, um, then the conduction on both of them will complete the circuit and the solar panel can charge the battery. Now the MOSFET whose source is connected directly to the negative of the battery is relatively easy to turn on. We just take the gate up to the positive of the battery. But this other MOSFET, the source, is kind of floating at um, different potentials. If the circuit here is switched off, it's about minus 20 volts, open circuit solar panel. If the circuit is switched on, then it's sort of this potential here. But driving this second MOSFET is quite complicated. And in fact, the way to do it is with an opto isolator. And here you can see in the circuit, the drive for this right hand MOSFET comes through this uh, PC817 opto isolator and from some circuitry down here. The drive for this left hand MOSFET comes straight out of one of the outputs of this LM324. So it's a relatively complicated circuit. So is this the optimum circuit for a solar charge controller? Well, I'm not so sure because you've got two MOSFET on resistances here, a relatively complex driving circuit involving an opto isolator. You've got a common positive. I think it's much more intuitive to have a common negative and to switch in the high side. And I've always said that the holy grail of MOSFET switching configurations is N channel high side. So is there a MOSFET configuration, a holy grail configuration of an N-channel MOSFET on the high side of the circuit that works for solar charge controllers? And well, yes, of course there is, because that's exactly what I did in my PWM5 solar charge controller, this one here. I have a single N-channel MOSFET on the high side of the circuit, and that's the circuit diagram for it. Now, the problem with an N-channel MOSFET on the high side is that it requires a gate voltage here, which is actually higher than the battery positive voltage. So that's positive of the battery, negative is down here. The gate voltage is above battery positive. How do you generate that? Well, you have to do it with a charge pump. This is a charge pump circuit. Battery positive again here, through three diodes, two capacitors. These uh, outputs are square waves in antiphase. One goes up while the other comes down. And we can turn 12 volts at the positive of the battery to about 20 volts here. And then that can be switched through some transistors to the gate of the MOSFET. 20 volts on top of 12 volts gives us about 8 volts of positive potential on the gate, turns this high side MOSFET on. Now, yes, this is a very complex circuit. We've got three transistors here um, to interface the microcontroller which is down at sort of zero and five volts into the MOSFET. We've also got this charge pump, which requires these two oscillators running in antiphase. But we do get the benefit of a single on resistance. We do get a benef the benefit of not switching in the zero volt line. We're switching in the positive line. And I think those benefits are worth this extra circuitry. And here is that circuitry as implemented in the PWM5. Here are the three transistors that make up the high side driver. Here's the charge pump with the two capacitors and the three diodes, one, two, and uh, that, that's the third one. Actually, I don't think that is the third one. The third one is around the back there. So it's a relatively small circuit. And all that we need to do here is replace this PIC microcontroller with the Arduino, and we've got a functioning solar charge controller circuit. Now you can see that in terms of size, the Arduino Pro Mini and the high side driver circuit and the charge pump are all roughly the same size. So the high side driver, the MOSFET, the charge pump could all be put on one small piece of strip board and mounted back to back with the Arduino. Now you can see that early versions of the PWM5 were actually built on strip board. So I've got quite a neat layout for the high side driver and the charge pump on strip board, which could then be put on the back of an Arduino Pro Mini. So with a piece of strip board cut to approximately the same size as the Arduino Pro Mini, and with the uh, high side driver components and the charge pump uh, components mounted on that strip board, I think it'd be possible to make a very, very small sized solar charge controller 
using the ATmega 328P, which is the Arduino's microcontroller. Um, similar in function to the PWM5, but using the Arduino, completely open source. The hardware and the software will be completely open source. And so that's the direction that I'm going to take this project um, from this point onwards.